Okay, we're back. Uh, this is Mark again, and uh, starting up on this iPhone 6 long screw damage. Uh, I'm here in Florida getting some work wrapped up before I head to practical board repair school next week in beautiful Honeyoy Falls. Um, I'm going to leave the miserable, absolutely miserable, uh, 80 degree weather here in Florida and go spend a week in the lovely, just check the weather tonight, 33 degrees in Honeyoy Falls. Um, I cannot wait. I love it when I go outside and uh, just completely freeze to death immediately. Um, so yeah, really looking, really excited. <laughs> All right, um, so I'm going to assume that Jessa is keeping an eye on the chat, so I'm just going to be here uh, talking and kind of watching the chat a little bit. So these long screw damage jobs, uh, we still see a lot of them, and they are a pain, but they're mostly straightforward as long as... As long as, let me, let me get that back out. As long as the guy before me doesn't do this. Um, <laughs> as long as you don't do that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so, my recommendation is if you accidentally mix up your screws, uh, just go ahead and send that board to iPad Rehab. Don't bother sending it anywhere else or attempting to fix it your own. Um, Unless you don't really want the phone to work again. In that case, have at it. All right. Let's see what is going on in chat. Nothing. Nothing I need to know about. Okay, so how bad, how bad is this? Let's see how spongy this is. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh boy, that's, that's not what you want. All right, so that is a spongy board. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the CPU shield off. That way I can easily expose as far back as I need to, to get to good, solid, non-spongy board, logic board, PCB that has not been delaminated. this little pad off because sometimes I have to go all the way up near the flash driver to get this working. Jess is asking, can I press on it and tell that it's third, way, third layer, no wait, fourth from the squish? Um, sometimes, sometimes I can tell that it needs third layer. Um, <laughs> it they they never need fourth layer unless somebody else has been in there uh, doing things they shouldn't have. Um, but uh, for for these for the iPhone six, if it's going to need third layer repair, it's going to need it right about at this point. So when I see this area is spongy, then I'm usually you know, mentally preparing myself for a third layer repair. But when it's just the screw bracket like this, and it's, it's just areas over here that are spongy, um, then, you know, it doesn't, doesn't really need it because there's nothing important around in this area. It's really just right there where we have third layer damage that has to be fixed. So, 
So I pretty much this process is down to a, a science, down to a system that I always do the same thing every time. Um, and that is pick away this underfill just to get it out of the way because I'm going to score the board right along here and right along here. So I just want to remove the top layer from the places I want it removed and not have it just peel off wherever it feels like coming off. So this is kind of my signature pattern that I always do on these jobs. And even though this edge over here isn't really delaminated that much, I want to expose it because there are some third layer traces down there that are used for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So I want to have a good look at it. So that's why I don't like just scratch away at the area that looks damaged. Um, I really want to expose everything all the way around so I can really see um, because the damage extends way outside of the uh, pad for the bracket most of the time. Sometimes you get lucky and it, it's localized, but that's a, that's a unicorn. All right, so we are really spongy in this area. Now this is just another ground plane underneath the top ground plane, and these are all uh, thermal vias to help dissipate heat. Uh, so I'm not really worried about those guys. Just want to get this entire top layer off so that I can really see what I'm working with in that second layer. So see, this is, this is spongy here, which, you know, it's not great, but it's usually not a problem. I like to pull it off when it's like this, just so I can have a look underneath. Um, usually there's nothing to fix down there, and that looks like the case now. And then my via that I need that sometimes makes me go down into the third layer uh, for LCM reset is right here. And uh, that's a little spongy. Yeah, so I guess I will be going down into the third layer. So in that case, I'm going to expose just a little more of this. Let me get this second layer peeled off. And now we're down into the third layer. So the trace that I want to work with is right here. It runs from this via in the third layer to the left and then kind of up at an angle. That's it right there. That's going to be enough to work with on that. Get rid of that little punched out piece of copper there from the screw. And let's see. So this repair is not just for data. This is for the sake of the device. So I do need to repair all of the damaged lines.
Now I have to be really careful down here because I can see that this these traces here are in a layer that has now uh, separated, delaminated from the next layer down. So this is second layer that has separated from third layer. And while I'm scraping, I could very easily, and sometimes do, uh, cause the the traces to just break off and and you know disappear. And that makes the whole job a lot more difficult because then I've got to expose back closer and closer to this line, which is for ear speaker. And I want to avoid that if possible. It's a pain in the ass. All right. So I've got my six traces here. And then... As far as the other ends of those, I've got one and two there. So I need to expose the other four ends, which are up here. And this top end, usually I have a lot more room to, a lot more room for error up here. Um, because it, it rarely starts to get delaminated up here because of that uh, shield being soldered on. So usually, you know, sometimes it's delaminated all the way up to that shield or the pad for the shield, but it rarely is, is, goes beyond that. Oh, oh, went a little too deep there. That was my bad. It happens. Nobody's perfect. All right, so I've got one, two, three, four of the traces that I needed, but this one I've got to go a little bit farther back on. There we go. That'll be enough to get the job done. And then I'm just going to get rid of this chunk. I don't want it flopping around. All right. Uh, I'm going to take a second to check up on the chat. Let's see. Oh, it's a little, little, uh, Jessa and Lewis back and forth. Lewis, you got a $1,200 plumber bill to pay. Why you got a, why you got such a high plumbing bill? because he's been uh, guarantee guarantee it's because he's been saving money on toilet paper by getting the rolls of brown paper towels out of the public restrooms around New York City and that's what screwed up the plumbing guarantee it I'd bet money on it All right, so now we should be down to uh, just placing the uh, jumpers, and then I guess I'll go ahead and deal with this first. Ooh, ooh, wow. Don't often see the middle hole that spongy. There might actually be some work to do under here. So I will go ahead and dig into that before I start placing jumpers. Might as well place them all at once if I need to do some over here too. <laughs> Lewis says no vegan diet. So what does that mean? It just you don't need toilet paper. It just slides out like a like a greased up snake. <laughs> no, I remember spending. I I spent. Uh, Actually, about six weeks doing a vegan diet, um, and yeah, man, that that does clean the pipes out. Um, but man, I missed missed me some meat during that time. I'm going back to a diet soon, but I'm not going full vegan again. All right. Oh boy. Uh oh. I hear my son 
crying and I should totally go to him, but I'm streaming. Uh, all right. Um, Jessa, I'm sorry. And uh, guys on stream and watching this later, I'm sorry. Um, but I know my wife has had a really hard time getting enough sleep lately, and I don't want to make her have to get up and attend to him. So I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Max is, he's having a tough, tough time tonight and wanted to get up and wanted to come lay down with me, but I'm just going to have him hang out on the couch in the living room. All right, so this, this is pretty messed up right here. You don't usually see this kind of severe damage in the center screw bracket. And there's really only one trace that I need to worry about in this area, and that's um, PP1V8. It runs kind of along here and over to a via, like right in here, and then connects up over to this uh, 1V8 filter here. So. <clears throat> If that line is broken or shorted, um, even even if I fix all this stuff, I still won't have image because the LCD won't be receiving the 1.8 volts, um, which is, uh, it's kind of funny how <laughs> both screw brackets will cause the phone to boot with no image if they are damaged severely. It's like everything about iPhone 6 long screw damage just wants the phone to boot up with no image. All right, so there's the end of my trace for PP1V8. Let's see if I can get a diode mode reading on it. I am getting a reading, so that means the line is not broken. It's a little bit spongy. I do kind of want to expose some more of it just to just to make sure sometimes the act of exposing can cause damage that wasn't there to begin with. All right. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. I just thought it might have a little tear here. Um, the thing about this 1V8 line is uh, if, if I did have a tear through like most of the line, but it was still partially connected, um, it wouldn't be able to deliver the current that is necessary to produce an image. So even though uh, the multimeter would say that uh, that it's you know a good diode mode reading, when you actually boot the phone up, uh, you still wouldn't get image because it would kind of hit a current limit that's artificially created by 
the line just being so thin. But, all right, moving back to this. So now I feel pretty good about uh, just fixing these traces and this device should boot up. Uh, let's see, what's going on in chat? Uh, uh, more, more Lewis and Jessup back and forth. Yeah, go to go to the supply store. That's where that's where you guys should buy stuff. Don't buy from that cheapskate Lewis. <coughs> All right, let's get some work done. Get some flux in there. Get some fresh 45 gauge wire that I finally broke down and bought and stopped using the vibrator wire. Listen to me, Colin Lewis, a cheap cheapskate. And for like years now, I've been using wire I harvest out of a vibrator motor rather than spending 12 bucks on a spool of <laughs> 45 gauge wire. All right, let's get in here. So I could try to like make these lines really tight. Um, and you know, maybe that, that would kind of look better visually, it would be more, more visually appealing. Um, but what I like to do is leave them kind of long. That way I can route them however I want to with, you know, no concern about any kind of bridging, right? So if I leave them a bit long, then I can, you know, move them around and get them, get them just where I want them rather than trying to do little tight ropes. If everything here was just straight, like in the 5S, I would make really tight looking uh, jumpers. But for these six jobs, I prefer to leave them a little bit, leave a little bit of slack in the line. All right, now I gotta be really careful about these this next guy because I hate breaking that trace off and having to dig back farther. Come on, little wire. Oh, that's not connecting very great, and I think it's because my tips are a little bit oxidized. And get some fresh flux in there too. There we go, that's a nice joint. So that's something that is very important when you're starting out soldering to, to be able to notice is you know when things aren't doing what they should be doing, yeah, you need to, to look at it and be able to tell why, right? And most of the time the answer is either going to be 
Uh, it's not working because my soldering iron tips are too oxidized, or I'm using the wrong tips for the job and I'm not delivering enough heat, or I don't have enough flux. I think those are probably the most, most common uh, noob mistakes. Let's see. Jessa says, Mark, I saw a giant barracuda with Bailey last week in the water five feet away. Oh my God, I know that fear. Um, when I was snorkeling in the Virgin Islands, uh, I saw uh, what was you know probably five foot barracuda, uh, just yeah five feet away, and man that the it was scary enough seeing a fish that big with with teeth like that just chilling in front of you, but what really really terrified me was when in the blink of an eye he was then 20 feet away and you know a couple of seconds after that uh you know another blink of an eye and he's back in front of me again like they are crazy fast i i could not believe how fast that fish could move from one point to another that's those things are scary All right, two to go. So I have two traces left and I could connect them both down here where I have the wire, the, the trace exposed, or I could connect them up next to this trace. Um, but what I really think works best in this situation is to stagger as much as possible. So I'm going to connect one down here, and then I'm going to connect the other up here. And that reduces the chances that I'm going to uh, desolder something I've already fixed. Look at that. That was pretty weak. All right, so I'm going to connect... The first one as far down as I can, and then the second one a little farther up. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do that the other way. I'll connect the first one as far up as I can, and the next one a little farther down. There we go. So up at this other end, I don't have a whole lot of choice. I've got to kind of work with the little bit of what's left. Ooh. All right, let's get you back on there. Ah, damn it. I hate it when I touch that ground and start this mess. And I've lost the tip of that trace. So now running out of running out of runway here. All right, got you connected there. And you're connected down here. All right, I think that's gonna work. Let's see, I don't know, that joint could be a little better. There, that's solid. I think maybe, maybe by the end of the week, I'm gonna be all healed up no longer sick with this stupid head cold. Oh, it's driving me crazy. Just been stuffed up and miserable for God, three weeks now. 
All right, can I connect you without desoldering your little friend? And without connecting you to ground. All right. That's really annoying. I'm getting rid of that ground. It's just too close. Pain in the ass. And I need to make sure that this line is not touching the other line. All right, get that ground out of there. Ground has been repealed. All right, can I get you to stick there without disturbing the other guy? Ooh, are you connected? Are you two connected right there? I think you might be. Yeah, damn, so close. So close. Ah, no, no, that's exactly what I didn't want. All right, come on, there we go. All right, they're both connected where I want them. Good. Oh, that could have gone a lot worse. Let's get you connected down here. All right, there's... Uh, that's a good joint. That'll work. Uh, maybe just touch it up one more time. No, no. See, there's part of me that's OCD that is good for the job. And that same part of me is bad for the job sometimes. Okay, I'm done with you. I'm not touching you anymore. I'm so confident that this is going to work that I'm not even saving that last little bit of wire. Just throwing it away in the brass wool. And just go over these real quick. Make sure nobody's touching anything I don't want them to. These guys are good. That guy's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right. I'm happy with that. So... Let's see what happens when I boot you up. So all I'm looking for right now is just that I get an Apple logo because that, um, that you know, the if I can get an Apple logo, then the battle is won. Uh, then I can reassemble and fully test with, uh, you know, all the parts, test for flash and Wi-Fi and all that good stuff. But right now, all I care about is, can I get an Apple logo? Let's see if I can get this to pick up. Ah. Let's see. Uh, the camera's not going to pick it up. Well, maybe. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there is a very, very faint Apple logo there. So, um, it is now displaying an image, but I have no backlight. So, let's find out why do I not have a backlight. backlight. Let's see. I wonder if this is the classic iPhone 6 backlight failure that somebody was troubleshooting, didn't notice that it was a backlight problem, thought it was an image problem, or maybe thought it was a backlight problem with their screens, 
and then trying out different screens is when they cause long screw damage. So if this is classic iPhone 6 backlight, I'm going to get a short to ground on these guys. And no, I've got 0.525, which is good. So where was my backlight anode? And it's been a long time since I've had to probe at these connectors. Is it that guy? I think it might be this guy goes to this backlight filter here. Well, that backlight filter seems to be okay. So maybe it is, <laughs> maybe it's the beat up ass screen that I always use. Let's swap that out for another one. According to the multimeter, there should not be a problem with backlight right now. So try another screen before I start doing any further troubleshooting. And there we go. We do have working backlight. Uh, there we go. So there we go. Uh, Apple logo. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let this boot up and make sure touch is working because that's the other uh, common thing that we see is um, uh, a, a shop or end user troubleshooting touch problems and then in swapping out a bunch of different screens they cause uh, long screw damage. Um, all right so boot up stopped for a second because my DC power supply uh, alligator cables touched each other so let this continue to boot up but yeah I would say that the, the most common um, secondary problem that I see in these devices after fixing long screw damage is that touch doesn't work as well. Um, and that ends up being like the original problem that, that of course is never ever mentioned in the device history. Um, so, you know, you fix the long screw damage, get it to boot up, it has no touch. And then you give the customer a call and you're like, oh yeah, yeah. Well, I thought it was just the screen, but then I changed the screen and I got nothing. Um, so, just want to make sure touch is working. If it's not, I'll go ahead and fix that too. Um, that's pretty standard for me is and when I fix a long screw damage and find touch isn't working, I just kind of throw that in as a bonus. Let's see. Somebody talking smack about my screen. All right, so um, I do have working touch. Uh, but the backlight is super dim now. My camera's not picking it up. And that's just because I don't have a proximity sensor sent, set up. So the, you know, once the device gets booted up, the ambient light sensor kicks in and dims everything as far as it can go. Um, but trust me, I have working touch. Otherwise, I would fix it. Um, so there we go. Long screw damage done. Device boots up. Working image, working touch. So now we just got to slap it all back together and make sure camera flash and audio and all those good things work. Um, all right. So that is that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Uh, see ya. See you later. Oh, you want me to, you want me to put the green goop on it? Uh, all right. I'll put the green goop on it. Fine. Um, actually, uh, I'm not going to put the green goop. I have the green goop right here. This is, this is the good stuff. Um, but I have misplaced my backlight or black black light. Um, so that's not going to happen right now because I don't want goop everywhere and not cured. Um, but yeah, the green goop is great. And I guess I need to go hit up the supply store and get myself one of them, uh, one of them black lights so that I can start gooping stuff up again. Uh, yeah, that is the supply store is where I got the, uh, the green goop, but, uh, all right. So I am out of here. Have a good night. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I'll probably stream a couple of things on my channel before I go to bed or not. I don't know, but I'm going to go have a cigarette and think about it.